It has been a long time, Revit. To start, you should notice these tabs, architecture, structure, insert, etc. And when you click each tab, you have different tools underneath. Let's start by inserting the JPEG of the floor plan that we're referencing. So we go up to the insert tab and choose import image. And then we find the image that we're trying to put in here. We'll talk about file structure soon, but in the meantime, try to keep things organized. Okay. I'm going to save the file. I'm going to put the year, the month, and the date. So the next step is to make sure our reference image is scaled properly. I'm going to go to the architecture tab and use model lines. And I'm seeing how far off the scale is currently. So this one should be 23 feet. That one should be 20 feet. So we want that at 23, but we have that at 13 and two inches. So I divide, I do what I want over what I have. I get 1.747. So I go to modify and then the modify panel, click scale, select the elements to scale. I type in my number to do it numerically. And then click a reference point and boom, it's scaled. So this one is roughly 23 feet and that should be 20. Yep, pretty close is what I said at the time. Yep, pretty close. Now besides the solid wall at the rear, these are all curtain walls. So we go to the architecture tab, choose wall, and then choose curtain wall. And let's start to define the plan of the Eames house in Revit. Now I realize that the scale is still off slightly. This time I do a graphical scale. And for this one, you draw the line at where it should be. You click your base point. Then the next point is the second point of the initial line. And then lastly, you click the point of the new line, making sure they have the same base point beforehand. We can go to the view tab and click 3D view and see what we've made so far. But we like to do as much of the work as we can in orthographic views. Plan section elevation. So for the retaining walls, I'm doing a regular wall. So I've got the shape of the retaining wall over there and the plants are on the left. Bam. Now my elevation views are missing. If that's the case with you, you can go to the view tab, then the create panel, elevation drop down, choose elevation, and then you place the cursor near a wall in the plan view and you click to place the elevation symbol. Now you have your elevation views created. And we can click and drag to expand the window of our elevation view. And we want the entirety of the structure and the drawing view. All right, I think Revit's starting to come back to me a little bit. It's been like six years. So I got a little ahead of myself with the way I was modeling. Um, it seems the height of the Eames house is 17 feet. So we can grab the unconnected height that the building goes to and take that to 17 feet. Shortly in the video, we're going to put in levels and you can, instead of doing an unconnected height, bring the height to the level that you've put in. There's more than one way to skin a cat. That's a really weird saying. So control click is to select extra things. Shift click is to deselect something. I think it's kind of the reverse of some programs. Uh, frustrating. Sorry, the reverse of some software. Uh, program means something else for us. All right, I think the ratio is looking more like the Eames house to me. Now, so I think the grids on this particular drawing I chose, I think this is a really good one to reference actually, they align with the mullion pattern on the glazing. So horizontally on this plan, this wall is split into 10. So this grid is actually the grid of the mullions. 
so in the architecture tab you can select curtain grid and start adding the grid of the Eames house onto the facades and you'll see to the right of the curtain grid you can add an actual mullion which will be a thicker more prominent line and you should reference the photographs to see where the thicker mullion should go um, I'm not going to take it to that level for speed to get this video out but you guys should because that variation will make the model read much more nicely and thinking about the overall design of the house you will figure out where the thicker mullion is warranted and where you can get away with just the curtain grid it would probably be a good idea to get your entire curtain grid on there before putting in your mullions so to add the levels we're going to go to the architecture tab you might see datum it'll be in there and then click the level button and this should be done in an elevation or section view not plan or 3d i believe the keyboard shortcut is ll so you can type that instead of clicking the tool from the tab if you'd like now we're in draw mode and we can draw two points to create the level and we want these to go horizontally you know be level and be parallel to each other which Revit does by default I'm missing the drawn level head maybe it's because I'm using Revit LT hey if you guys figure out why mine are missing let me know so I'm going to get the center point um, and I don't even know if this is how the house is proportioned so use your reference images do your own investigative work but I'm going to put a line in the center and use that to locate the second floor and you guys can figure out what you're calling your levels but just to let you know what I'm calling mine for now so I'm doing a finished floor level which is where the finished floor will be I'm doing a bottom of the second floor slab level I'm doing a second floor level and I'm doing a top of I'm do, and I'm doing a ceiling level, and I'm doing a top or top of plate level, which is typically what we refer to as the highest point on residential construction. Even though that's used more on wood frame construction, and Eames House is not your typical house. We have I beams and trusses and curtain walls. I must say that I just realized this. This kind of seems like a glass house and a number of those have been done, but out of all of them, this one seems the most humane and easiest to live in. Mad prop seems. There's the Mies van der Rohe, the, the Farnsworth house, which is obviously a beautiful structure. And the uh, Philip Johnson's glass house, which was kind of a copy of the Farnsworth house. You want to do ground or finished floor? bottom of slab and then level two or second floor and then maybe ceiling and then roof level or you know if you want to keep the top nomenclature up to you so i did this off camera i put in the, the floor as one slab if you want to do the interior and exterior separately go right for it you guys are probably going to give them separate material treatments eventually anyway so it might be a good idea to do them separately. So now I'm going to do level two and I'm going to follow this drawing. So to put in the floors, architecture tab, floor, architectural floor, and we draw the floor with the tools here. On the Eames house, the rectangle tool will make sense. And I'm extending the floor to the second line so it sits on top of the wall. That's it. Oh, and then the height of these. I'm going to control click to keep selecting them, to select all of them and then connect these to the bottom of slab which is the level they should end at there we go now the roof you guys should be getting the hang of this by now architecture tab roof roof by footprint so this is a flat roof but a flat roof is never completely flat you got to get the water off of it somehow you don't want ponding on there that would be a serious issue I don't know how the slopes work on this house, but if the information is out there, you guys should find it and incorporate the slopes into the roof.
And we can discuss that in class and figure that out together if, if we find that information. So to draw the I-beam, um, you can find the family on Revit City. So I'm doing the I-beam as an extrusion. You should have that family somewhere, structure family. But if not, draw the shape and extrude it. You could do a mass in place. I'm doing a wall in place because in Revit LT that's my only option. So the retaining walls are not as high as the house walls. So I'm going to split my walls. I had previously drawn it as one continuous wall, but we need to split them so we can go to the modify tab and the modify panel and we see split element and we could use that and then place the cursor on the wall where we want to split it and click. We're going to split the wall vertically. And then go to the properties on the left and change the top constraint to something that looks correct. And here the Eames house has a spiral stair. So we're going to go to the architecture tab. You might see a common theme here. And then we're going to click stair and then do stair by component. And we're going to pick the full step spiral stair. By default, where you click is the center of the staircase and you drag to decide the radius. Now we need to cut out an opening so the people walking up the spiral staircase don't hit their heads. We click on the floor we want to edit, go to edit boundary and we can use these tools to draw in the shape we'd like. I'm making this up be more accurate than I'm being right now. On the other side of the Eames house, we have a ladder. I'm modeling it as an extrusion. You can feel free to do that or, or look for a Revit family. For the portions of the Eames house that are not glazed, but are solid between the glazing, um, I'm going to show you one thing you can do, which is a wall in place. Um, you'd probably want to remove the mullion before doing this, because as you see when you zoom out, it still shows up. So. You can click the curtain wall or the mullion and go to add or remove segments and start removing segments that you'd like taken away. We've got the truss, which I'm also going to model as an extrusion. Again, feel free to find that structural element of a truss that looks like the one in the Eames house. Or, hey, feel free to model it as an extrusion if you'd like. You may have noticed so far our 3D view has been in parallel, but we can also get it into perspective. So to get a perspective view, you go to view, click on create, go to 3D view and then click camera. And then where you click is where the camera is. And then where you drag to is the direction the camera is facing. So we can make 3D views and again, drag, click and drag to define the frame of the view.